Hey guys, how's it going? Rippy here, back with another painting video. This time around we're doing Baron the Dwarf Fighter from Zombicide's Green Horde. And, well, it's a dwarf. And he's got two really epic looking weapons. Which one of them looks very magical as well, in the concept art. So we're going to try and copy that while we're doing this. But we've primed this in our usual grey primer that we always use. Um, any primer does work, but I just happen to have a lot of this primer. So I just use this. It's a standard... I think it's just called a critic grey primer. So anything will work. I've tried using, uh, well, recently I've tried using just standard artist paints thinned down, and they work just as well because they are quite high in pigment. But, um, we've done back to the mini now because we almost finished the colour. Uh, we've done Monster Brown for all the leather armour, and then we're moving on to Necromancer's cloak for his cloak, even though he's not a Necromancer. And surprise appearance of the cat. Just randomly decided the quickest route to his bed was to just walk across the desk. There we go. Now we're coming to the end of Necromancer's Cloak. As you can see, it takes quite a while because I'm trying not to get Necromancer's Cloak all over the place as it makes a right mess if you try and paint over Necromancer's Cloak. And we've just come in with Elven Flesh as well, just to do the face. There we go, and that's the face done. Then we're moving on to Dark Stone for the wolf fur that's covering his back. We do also do the boots in this colour if you haven't already noticed. Um, it's just so that it gets a bit of variety because the boots are right next to the Necromancer's cloak. So if we done them the dark colour that they look, it will just sort of blend in and look strange. So the dark stone actually gives us a little bit of variety and still remains dark. But that was it for dark stone. Then we're on to lava orange for the beard. As he is a very ginger dwarf.
And there we go. That was it for Love Orange. Lucky enough, I only needed one coat. Which I thought it was a bit strange for Orange, but it seemed to just work this time around. Normally, with an Orange, you would have to do a couple of coats or something of that sort of similar style. Now we've done the beard, we're moving on to Alien Purple. And this is all for his sort of Under Armour clothing. So it's got a sort of greyish purplish tinge. So I figured Alien Purple would work with a dark tone. There we go, that's the alien purple done, and it's a very colourful looking dwarf at the moment, but the wash does dull a lot of that down and make it look more normal. And we've now moved on to rough iron for the hammerhead. As I think that's the only part I do with the rough iron as well, looking at the mini. Um, there are other bits you can do. Oh no, I do the braces as well, which aren't essential, but it adds a little bit of variety and makes it look a little bit nicer. And then now we're finally done, we're moving on to Shining Silver. And this is for shoulder pads and all the little metallic studs on his armor. Along with the, I do the handle of the hammer in this, which it works and it looks right. But I think Rough Iron might have been a better option to do that and then just do the end of the hammer in this Shining Silver. There we go, that was it for Shining Silver. Now we're moving on to Oozing Purple. And this is for an edge highlight on, um, it's only really the gloves and the sort of wraps around his beard. I don't do the legs for this. As the legs are fairly covered, so an edge highlight would offset all the highlights of the model and it would look strange. Because normally you would top down highlight. So legs being covered wouldn't actually get one in real life. And that was it for that highlight. Now we're moving on to Fire Lizard for highlight of the beard. It's basically just raised up areas, just use Fire Lizard. It's quite a thin paint in general as it's yellow based and yellow is a nightmare to do anything with. So just getting a decent amount onto the raised areas will sort of run it down a little bit and give it a bit of blend before we actually put the wash on anyway. And that was the beard highlight done. Now we're on to Dragon Red. And this is for the inside of the mouth and the handle of the axe. As it looks like it's a nice leather handle on this magical green crystal axe that he's got.
And that was all the dragon red done. Now we're on to army green. This is the first layer of the axe head. As this does go through a few extra colors, um, just because I want to get a good sort of crackly, crystally effect on it. So the first layer is going to be angel green. And now we're on to skeleton bone. And this is for his teeth, the wolf's teeth, along with the handle of his hammer. I do also dot in the eyes, but I would ignore that for now as when I put the wash on it, it fills it in anyway and hides that. So it's not overly essential unless you're doing a pure white and then it will shine through still after a wash. And now that that's done, we move on to Greedy Gold. And this is for the sort of ram's head that he's got on the axe. And that was the axe head done. Now we're on to Goblin Green. And this is for the first set of highlights on the axe head. So this is the edges along with, I do a little bit of sort of crackle effect, but this is not gonna be the final one. So it just sort of adds a little bit of variation to the axe head itself more than actually showing crackle. Now that's done, we're on to True Copper. And this is for the it looks like it's just something holding the big chunk of rough iron as the hammerhead which makes me sort of think more the hammerhead could actually be made of stone but we're doing rough iron as it's a hammer and it looks better like that um, now that that's done we're moving on to dark tone and this is for all of the armor along with the um, purple and shoulder pads i do also do the parts of the wolf fur but I don't do the entire thing as I want variation when I come along with the other wash. Now the dark wash is done, we move on to flesh wash. And this is for all of the face and the beard, as you can already tell. Uh, along with the axe gets a flesh wash as I find flesh wash is kind of a ready color so using it on something red still works as a wash but it also darkens it down with the brown that's inside of it but that was all we were doing flesh wash on now we're on to strong tone and this is for everything else left on the mini along with I do actually go over the armor with this just to sort of blend the washes on the mini And now all the washes are done and dried. Um, it's the next day, as you can tell, the camera was looking a lot clearer for some reason. Um, we come back with the first highlight back up, and this is monster brown for all the areas in between the studs, just to make that armor pop back up. Along with all the padding, I just do the top of each pad. And it just adds that depth and variety and takes away the strong stain that the wash actually put onto this mini and it makes it look more colorful and it's a player character so it should be quite bright and vibrant and that was that for highlights of the brown now we're on to the axe again and this is using citadel's layer of moot green 
as it's a very sort of bright yellowy green and contrasting with the washed and highlighted um, axe that was already there it actually comes out quite well it gives it a nice little crackle effect it pops a lot more and citadel paints are very high pigment so they just go on and stay But that was that and now we're moving on to skeleton bone again and this is just to emphasize the wraps on the handle and the teeth and i do also come back now and actually do the eyes properly And with that highlight done, we're on to Dragon Red for the highlight of the handle. And I also do just the tongue inside his mouth. As I want the tongue to pop back up to where it should be, just so it's separated essentially from the outside or, and inside of the mouth. I did also do the eyes on the wolf just to make it look a little bit more menacing. But that was it for the mini pretty much. Now we're on to matte black, which is two dots for the eyes which take absolutely forever because these eyes are very tiny on this mini because he's a small mini as it is and there's a lot going on on that face with the beard and then we do the matte black base like we always do And there we go, that is Baron the Dwarf done. And it's quite a quick mini. Oh, I say quick, it's probably the longest video I've done in a while, but it only took me roughly two hours to do this mini. It's just a lot of little details. But it's been fun and I've enjoyed doing it. Like I said, if you guys did enjoy it and I will be back soon with the next mini. See ya.